Hey, in this episode, I want to show you how to make zero waste kombucha. This is my continuous brew setup. I'm gonna start bottling and then we're gonna refill this. And I'm gonna show you everything that I do in order to get more kombucha later on after it's brewed, instead of buying it from the store and creating waste. And to do that, I have to go to one of my zero waste stores that are available in Hong Kong. Of course, I said my, because it does feel like they are made specifically for me. Let's go in, shall we? Come here today and buy some sugar and some tea. In this episode, I hope to flavor my kombucha with an apple and some organic mango from the tin. Doesn't really matter what kind of fruit you need in order to flavor on the second ferment with kombucha, as long as it's got some sugar in it. And I'll explain what a second ferment is after. It begins by blending the fruits. For me, it does anyway. You don't have to, you could actually try and fit whole fruit pieces into the bottle if you wanted to. I'm gonna blend the mango and then I'm going to blend the apple. When it comes to a large brewing vessel such as this, you don't need to have one with a little spigot and a tap. What you can do is basically just ladle out with a fermentation jar, but that creates a lot of mess for me and I don't like that. What I do want is something that's always going to be basically on hand so that I can test it effortlessly and then replenish it just as easily. What I tend to brew on the second fermentation is about this much sugar with about this much kombucha. Now the great thing about kombucha is you can flavor it however you want. I'm only using mango uh, for the most part today because this is what I want to get rid of because the tins are past their due date, they're okay though. And then whatever's left is going to be apple flavor. So if you have got fruit that's near its use by day or even vegetables, then kombucha, making kombucha, is a really good way to obviously not waste those foods. I've diced up some ginger and four of the eight mango are going to get the ginger and there'll be four without. Out of the eight bottles, half of them are going to have ginger and I'm going to use just a few slices just like this and then just pop them in. For those new to kombucha making like I am still, you get a sense for flavoring uh, after a while. But you also realize, or well, you know, get another sense, that certain fruits are more explosive than others. So mango and ginger is actually very explosive. But again, I just want to get rid of the mango. So I'm taking a chance today and I've got to be really careful and pay attention to the second ferment times. Now the temperature is lower in Hong Kong now. It's November as I film this. So I'm predicting a three day ferment, possibly four. Now, one thing to note, when you're going from first fermentation to second fermentation, you've got to save your SCOBY. I'll get into that later. And you've got to save some of the existing fluid as your starter culture for the next batch. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. This is just simple cloth to keep the fruit flies out and to allow oxygen to react with the SCOBY. I take this off. It smells good. It's actually a little bit vinegary, but that's fine because I'm adding sugar back into it. My hands are clean, so I'm gonna show you the SCOBY and then put it inside the starter fluid that I have here. Ooh, a bit fell off. So this is my SCOBY, it's very ugly. Some of the YouTubers will show off their perfectly formed SCOBYs. Uh, all credit to them, I guess. Um, but this is the state of mine. And I'm actually gonna get close to cutting this in half and make two brewing vessels so I can make twice as much kombucha um, very soon. But that's gonna go in there. What I like to do with this continuous brew setup is having removed the SCOBY, I can give this a stir and all the sediment that's at the bottom will actually now get stirred up and it's evenly distributed amongst all the bottles. Here's the close-up of the SCOBY itself. Yeah. 
It looks disgusting, right? But that is a bacterial colony and you have to look after it. I've successfully bottled four mango and four mango and ginger with still some liquid left and that's where the apple comes in. I've simply just blended my fresh apple and I use some starter culture to just loosen it up instead of adding water. So it's all kombucha and apple in there already. I have a very messy kitchen, but a very clean uh, receptacle. We have two apple and ginger. We have one apple, four mango and ginger and four mango. So I successfully got 11 bottles of kombucha out of this first fermentation. For those expecting some sort of taste test, uh, that's not gonna happen in this episode because uh, we've gotta wait a couple of days. What I'm actually gonna do is dedicate another video to basically kombucha porn. And I'll open a, a couple of these and we'll see the uh, results. In the meantime, what we're gonna do now is get into the first fermentation and we're gonna find out how do we grow and feed the SCOBY. Well, it's really simple as long as you have a SCOBY. All you need is tea and sugar. That's it. The first thing to do when creating your next batch is to boil some water. I put mine in a pan. I measure it out with my jar. And importantly, make sure you use filtered water. You don't want any other bacteria interfering with the tea or eventually the SCOBY. If you're unsure what tea you want to use, for kombucha making, what you need is a black tea to begin with. Black tea is easier to use than green tea. There is a green tea version of kombucha out there. So I'll go for English breakfast tea, which I've done. Now you'll notice I'm not using tea bags. This is about 10 grams of tea. Okay, my uh, water's boiled. This is about 10 grams of tea here. This is about four to six normal sized tea bags. The tea bags being one and a half grams per bag. This is boiled. I'm going to let this stew for 30 seconds and then pop the tea in for 15 minutes. Once the tea has uh, been stewed, you can take that out if you want and you add the sugar. So we have 200 grams of sugar or one cup if you're an American and just give that a stir until it's all evaporated. This forms the basis uh, for all the food that the SCOBY will eat. So you've got all the healthy aspects of the tea. The, uh, is it polypropanols? Can't remember. <laughs> Trust me, but you still need it though. And then you've got all the sugar to, um, for the bacteria to eat because it's a type of bacteria that goes and eats sweet things. Sounds very scientific. Actually, this is a video that is a copy of another YouTuber video that I watch who gave me the idea to start making me on kombucha because it's a great way to save money. The value of everything here costs me less than actually buying a bottle of kombucha from the store. Well, that's almost evaporated. Now, this is called the concentrated tea method. I'm boiling a little bit of water and then evaporating the sugar and letting the tea soak in the water. What we wanna do now is fill this up with more water to then put in the jar. That is also a good way of not damaging your bacterial colony because it's temperature sensitive. And obviously this water won't be boiled when I fill it up with more water. Because this is all to do with zero waste rather than uh, making kombucha. Um, this has lots of useful properties. At the moment, I'm using this as plant food and I'm using this uh, in my fertilizer. So you don't need to compost it um, and you don't need to throw this away. That's why there's no tea bags. I've used this metal container to cut down on the, on the, uh, the rubbish that I'm uh, throwing out. Clever that, isn't it? I've actually cleaned this out. You don't have to with a continuous brew setup because the environment is pretty much gonna stay the same throughout the many first fermentations that you do. But I just want to be extra safe today, so I've cleaned this out with vinegar, don't use soap. Let's pour this back into here and then reintroduce the SCOBY and let it do its thing for the next couple of weeks on the first fermentation. But I want to pour the starter fluid back in. And then... There we go. 
Right. Bon appetit. Make sure you get a clean cloth and you can cover it. You don't seal it airtight because it's supposed to react with the oxygen in your kitchen. I then get some elastic bands. I've got some here. And that's basically now looking like a Saudi Arabian. Ready for sleep. This is gonna go in a dry, dark place, just like the second fermentation. I tend to put this just behind here. It's not usually this bright. I'm just doing it because of the YouTube, but normally I just have ambient light on at nighttime, but this would hide behind the microwave to protect itself from the sunlight. So please bear that in mind. This has to grow in darkness and leave it alone. Don't try to inspect it or poke it, especially if it's a brand new uh, kombucha scoby. Just let it do its thing and then go back to it. Make sure you get a logbook as well and track the temperature changes uh, over the days. And then the beautiful part about having continuous brew is you can just take a little sip, get a cup, open the tap a little bit, try it. If it's too vinegary, or if it is vinegary, then you know it's probably time to actually do the second ferment.